For today, I got planned what I think is going to be a pretty fun project. It involves reusing hardwood flooring, machining on the CNC, using up scraps I got laying around the shop, and then doing some engraving and painting that engraving so it looks like this, sort of. If you're interested in that, stick around. But first... I got stuff from Sticker Swaps. So these are my stickers. If you want one and want to send me one of yours, leave me a message down below. I would be happy to send you one. First little backstory. On the day of this recording, I am one week away from my mom's birthday, which should be enough time to make something nice, but also I'm leaving town in like two days in the morning, so I got exactly today and a bit of tomorrow to do something. And it's Sunday, so in Germany the stores are closed, so I gotta use what I got lying around. Now some people might say that I could have probably planned ahead a tiny bit more, but to those people I say, geez, get off my back, I got stuff to do. So recently a few of my buddies have been renovating their place, and they've used this kind of hardwood floor that got a really nice upper layer. I think it's oak or something, it's very pretty, and I managed to save a few offcuts of that. So what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna make a smallish box sort of thing, and I'm gonna use the router to machine make most of that, and also gonna put some inlay on top with this tiny v-carve bit. So to get to the point, I'm gonna rough cut this, put it on the CNC with some double-sided tape, and get started machining. Board. and what you're gonna notice right away is that it's a lot nicer up here than down here and that is cause the board wasn't perfectly flat maybe my table of my CNC isn't perfectly flat anymore but the point is there's about half a millimeter of difference between this side and this side over here and when the total depth of engraving is only like two millimeter half a millimeter is a lot but I got about let's say two and a half millimeters to work with. So my idea is just to basically sand a bit more of this side afterwards. Cause the design should still be there just a little bit uh, lower down the surface. So if I sand off, you know, a bit more this side, I should still get a relatively clean design. I didn't have this problem with the smaller parts cause there's less surface area and so less room for uh, errors or deviations but since this is a top piece the one on the top uh, it was a lot larger and so you know error accumulates but I think before I'm going to paint this and sand it down 
I'm going to actually glue up the box because that's going to make it a lot easier to later hold the box and sand it all together. And since I have these 45 degree angles, it shouldn't be too hard to get a clean surface. But it's also going to be a bit harder to <coughs> clamp it together, so I'm going to use dabs of super glue alongside wood glue to just temporarily hold it in place. That's not going to see a lot of pressure or force, so super glue in combination with wood glue should be more than enough. Yeah, I don't know if you were able to see that, but I was struggling quite a bit to get all those angles to one smash and then not slide around like crazy. I should have definitely put more thought into this. But on the other hand, if I was a planning man, I wouldn't be in this situation altogether. So, fingers crossed, lights went out, I'm gonna wait for them. Alright, the glue hasn't fully dried yet, but it is at a point where I'm able to handle it relatively safe. And since time is kind of an issue, I'm gonna start filling in these grooves with paint right away. I have cleaned them up a bit, uh, vacuumed it out and used the uh, knife to kind of clean out where there was stuff left, like right here. So my previous statement was a lie, I haven't cleaned it all, at all. And no, this is pre-finished since it's floorboarding. If this wasn't pre-finished, I would oil it now. So when I apply the um, lac lacquer, the paint on, I don't know, chemical based, not water based, it doesn't soak into the grain and kind of distorts the image. So this has been finished. I'm just gonna take a tiny spoon and fill in all these uh, grooves. And that's all you do. You just flood the lines with paint, then take some paper and scrub off as much as you can. Now I'm gonna let this dry and by the time this is dry, hopefully the glue is also dry and which will enable me to just take the whole box and sand it on a piece of wood with sandpaper attached. Everything is dry, but as you can see, these edges are not exactly perfect. But luckily, when you work without plants, you have creative freedom. So no, actually I never wanted those corners to be perfectly sharp. I always uh, wanted to have them chamfered. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is not at all because I had a messy glue up, but this is cause my plan calls for chamfered edges. Granted, those corners still look terrible, so I guess lesson learned, not gonna do chamfered sides on all the sides and try and get a good glue up ever again. But for now I'm gonna keep sanding this, this is 240 grit, I'm gonna try and get a nice surface on all sides and see how it looks afterwards. And after that I'm gonna have to do the most nerve-wracking part and that is cutting off the lid. And once I have the lid cut off and the, what's it called, hinge in the back, I can sand to fine grit and oil it. So since all of this is pretty repetitive work, you're probably gonna see a time lapse. God damn, that was time intensive. I think I used 25 minutes to do that. I mean, yeah, part of it might be that the saw is insanely cheap and not at all fine. Um, but still, it worked. So that's great, but um, there are two more problems. One is, this is the size of the lid, 
that's how I made it in my design. But then this is the type of hinge that I wanted to use. And I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it doesn't fit. Also, the inside is hideous since, you know, this hardwood floor uses cheap, I think, pine in the middle to make it cheaper. Um, but I might have a solution for that. I actually, I mean, who wants this tacky stuff on his box anyway? You know, that is so 2000, let's say 12, whatever. I actually have some red felt left, that's from another project. And I think I'm gonna line the inside with that. And if I manage to space one patch in here correctly, the friction should be able to hold the lid in place. So um, I'm gonna try just that. And to secure that thing, I'm just gonna use a few dabs of super glue so I can rip it out again. I do have contact cement, but that seems more permanent than I am currently, let's say, comfortable with. But yeah, the project is coming along nicely. Um, that's, that's looking pretty decent. I'm gonna have to use contact cement after all. This is just soaking into the fabric and not working. So I'm gonna get that prepped. I don't think contact cement is supposed to look like that. half an hour for my flight so I gotta make this quick. Here is the finished box. I didn't film all of it because time was a bit of an issue. You can see got some nice designs there. I'm gonna put some close-ups after the video. Um, the inside is lined with red, I think, velvet felt. I don't know what the right term is. I would have preferred to get some edge banding or veneer for this edge but I didn't have any and it kind of looks nice um, without it as well. But that was just be a finishing touch I would have preferred. Um, I'm gonna link uh, my Fusion 360 file down below if you want to see what I did there and the cam and cat. It's gonna be messy because you know it was use uh, it was supposedly just for me. But you can check it out if you want to. Now before I end this video, I have a few other projects in the making and I'm kind of not sure what to do first. So maybe we can have a voting. Uh, one thing is I got a few upgrades for my um, K40 laser, so I got a new exhaust system to suck out the air and I got direct air assist on the laser and I got like um, line lasers to mark where the laser is going to hit, so you know a few things. Uh, that would be one video. I'm also making a two-part machinist vise for my CNC, kind of inspired by this old Tony. Um, that's already in the making as well, but I'm still missing some parts, so if you want to see that. And the last thing I have planned is I acquired one of those Sunoff Wi-Fi switches that I meant for power supply. And I'm thinking of modifying it so it can like electronically push a button. Specifically the button of my coffee maker, and that needs literally one minute to warm up. So it wouldn't be that much of an advantage to have warm in the morning, but I mean I can do it. Presumably. So why shouldn't I? So that would be the third video. Uh, CNC, machining vise, laser, or coffee machine optimization, autom home, smart, super fancy stuff. Um, I'm gonna link a vote somewhere up, up, no, wait, up here, I think. So you can click that. And with that, have a good one. I gotta go. See you in the next video.